simple beginner introduction to Gutenberg. Um, it's not a designer. There will be no code in here. Maybe a little code. All those slides will be posted as soon as I get them from the speakers on the, on the WordCamp Asheville website. So if you go to the sessions, the sessions page and go click on the session, it'll take you to the description of that se session and at the bottom of that page, we'll have a link to their slides and when we get it, when they get posted to WordCamp.tv, the link to the WordCamp TV um, video of this session of that session will be on that page as well. So just come back to WordCamp.tv, I mean 2018.ashville.wordcamp.org, go to sessions and click on the session and you can get to the slides and the video when it's when they're available. So I should have the most of the slides up in the next day or two. <clears throat> I'm John Dorner. Um, started the Asheville area meet, meetup group several years ago. Um, we meet the first and third Wednesday, so if you're here, we'd love to have you. The first Wednesday of each month is for advanced topics, generally designers and developers. If you know a little PHP and a little CSS, you're good for that one. And if you want to learn more, that's where we're talking about it. And then the third Wednesday is for all users where we don't usually get into a whole lot of coding and stuff. Um, the next set, the first Wednesday in September, we'll be talking about PHP Storm. So if you want to know, learn about editing using an integrated development environment, an IDE, an editor for editing PHP, CSS, JavaScript, HTML, it's a great tool. So come learn more about that. Been on the planning committee since it started. The, my full-time job is the IT coordinator for the USDA SARE program. And I used to say I'm the IT, I, I am the IT department, but I've got somebody helping me part-time now, so that's great. Michael Hall, if he's not in here. Um, I do a little freelancing on the side, mostly people that I've been working with for many years, friends that I do a little bit. And as you'll notice from the slides, I am not a designer, and I don't attempt to be, and I don't pretend to be a designer. So I got to get that out of, the hand, out of the way. And you can reach me at john at dependabledevelopingcom uh, among other places. So today, what is Gutenberg? It is the code name for the new WordPress editor. They're, the idea is that, I think generally, they want to go head on head, head to head with Squarespace and Wix, and this is the way that they can make their site, that WordPress sites more competitive with the Squarespace and Wix. That's my personal opinion. Um, but it's really to make it easier for the end user, for you, the content creator, the editor of the content on the site to be able to customize and better control the content portion of your website without knowing any HTML, without knowing any code. Currently, the WordPress sites use what's called tiny MCE. You're familiar with the, the button bar. It's got the bold italics and the, it used to be the kitchen sink. Now they call it something else. But uh, they've got that button bar across the top. That's your editor. And you've got one big open blank page, just like a Word document. You've got one page to put all your content in. What Gutenberg is, is a different way of thinking about it. It does everything in blocks. So if you think of the old Gutenberg printing press, that's where the idea came from, that's the inspiration. Everything is in blocks or chunks and can be moved around as a block. So your paragraphs, each paragraph can be a separate block. It's in, it only applies to the content portion of the page. The Gutenberg is not a page at, um, layout controller it's only going to be what would be in that content section of your site. It's not going to affect the headers, the nav bars, the sidebars, the footer, any of that. That's all controlled by the theme. What Gutenberg is going to help you with is what goes inside that blog post or the contents of that page. And a post or a page is a collection of all these blocks. So your content section 
is going to be a collection of all these blocks that you can position around. And it is coming soon. We've been hearing that for a while now. Like, so last spring, or last, I think November, they said it's coming spring. And then in spring, it's coming this year. And then it was, it's coming August. Well, I wouldn't it surprise me if last night they announced, hey, it's here. But when WordPress updates to WordPress 5.0, and a lot of your sites, it'll update automatically to WordPress 5.0 from four, we're at, we're at 4.9.8, I think. But when WordPress updates, or if you manually click on Update WordPress, then it'll have the Gutenberg um, editor in there. Right now, it is a plugin that you can install and use and test. Depending on who you talk to, it is going to be the savior of WordPress or it's going to be the death of WordPress. So, depending on who you talk to, I'm somewhere in between. It's another tool in the toolbox. It is not a page builder. It's not going to build your theme and templates and things like that. This is just for dealing with the content portion. It is not a drag and drop editor. Although you can drag and drop blocks around, it's not perfect. It's not a true drag and drop editor. It works pretty well, but it's not optimal. It's the true multi-column support. You can add columns into your page or to a block and have columns, but you can't say, I want this, this section to have three columns. You can have two columns or no column or one column. Today, tomorrow, that's going to be different. It, when I expect over the next year, you're going to see lots of improvements, and probably most of the stuff that I say on here will not be true a year from now. Um, it does not have a ton of pre-made templates. There's a bunch, but there's not, you don't have templates for that page. You've got a blank page with the blocks, and you position them where you want. So once you create a page, then you can take and copy that page and make other, you, you got to create your own templates, so they aren't pre-made templates. Um, Styling options like the margins and padding between stuff, there's not a whole lot of choices on that. You'd have to use some CSS to get that done. And it doesn't have any responsive design settings, so you can't say, if the window width is this wide, then I want it to look this way, and if it goes down to this size, then I want it to look differently. You can't do that with the Gutenberg as it is today. Do you have to use Gutenberg? No, you don't. Even when 5.0, WordPress 5.0 rolls out, and they've got Gutenberg installed on your, on your site, you still don't have to use Gutenberg. You, there is a classic editor plugin that you can turn on, enable, and in the settings, you can say, I want to replace the Gutenberg with a classic editor, and you won't see any signs of Gutenberg on your site. So that's the really easy way. If you like the way it is now, you can keep using it the way it is now, no problems. If you want, you can use Gutenberg Editor by default, and then optionally include links to use the classic editor. So on one page, you want to use the classic editor. On another page, you want to use Gutenberg. You can do that. That's not going to be a problem. And there's the link to the classic editor. So do you want to test drive it before you try it and install it on your computer? Do you want to see what it's going to look like? Go to wordpress.org slash Gutenberg, and this is the page, and you can come in here, and this is what the Gutenberg editor looks like. So I can click here, and this is the title. I could just type in the title, and that changes the title. So that's simple. Um, here's, this would be the navigate, your sidebar, and you can click to add title. This is what it's going to look like. I can, so this is a block, right here is a block with an image in it. So I can add more blocks by clicking on the little plus sign here, and we'll go through all this in a minute. But you can go to this site and create your own, or play with Gutenberg at current site uh, without Gutenberg. This is what is called the tiny MCE editor. This ad media, this box right here, this is the tiny MCE editor. And this, I'm assuming everybody's familiar with this window. 
this is what that window looks like after you've installed Gutenberg. So when you go to add a page or a post, you'll get something that looks very much like this. You can do all the same stuff from this page that you could from the previous page. So if you click on the little three, the call it hamburger buttons, but the three dots in the upper right corner, that gives you your editor options. So you've got the visual editor or the code editor, just like on the current version, you've got the little tabs across the top of your editor. Here it's in the three dots in the upper right corner, and you can switch between looking at the, the visual as WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get editor, or do you want to look at the HTML code in for that block? You can do that. Um, do you want to show the tips? When you hover over things, it'll show tips. The fixed toolbar to the top will, I th think it's more like how Mac has the toolbar for a program is at the top of the window regardless of which program you're in. That's how this works. If you fix toolbar to the top, the, the bold italics, the, whatever choices that are appropriate for that block will appear at the top of your editor window. If you, have that, if you don't have that checked, they're going to appear at the top of the block. So each block, will, it'll be at the, at, with the block. And then there's a tool to copy all contents. So if you create a page and you got all the blocks in there and you want to use this as a template, you can copy all content and then go create a new post and paste that content in and you can, you've got your template, go, just go and change your content. This little information button icon, the I, that lets you easily navigate to section. This is something that's new. It gives you your word count, how many headings. It gives you a document outline. You can click on any of these outline on any of these headers in your outline, and it'll jump you to that section of your post or page. So this is pretty nice. Nice, nice improvement. On the right side, you've got a document and a block section. So if you want to look at document, you click on document. This is where you can go and get the things that you're familiar with on that right side of your current editor. So your status, visibility, publish date, post format. Do you want to stick this, make this a sticky post? So what a sticky post is, is on your posts page, a lot of times it's your, you may have a blog that where all your posts are going or your home page. The sticky post says this post stays at the top of that list instead of just having them in the order that they were most the most recent post first. So you can give this, say, I want this one to stay on top regardless of what posts follow. Um, your tags, your featured image, your excerpt, discussion. So all that's, this is very similar to the same feature, same questions you're asked on the current system. So that's no big change there. Just, it's, a, it's in a different place. You click on the document button to get it. To change the, the uh, the slug or the permalink, um, the part of the URL that goes after your site, you click on the title. And when you're editing the title, that gives you this permanent link editor. So you can go in and edit that from there. When you're in the block, each block is going to have a different set of options. So if you click on the block button in the top right or tab in the top right. If you're editing a paragraph type block and it tells me that it's a paragraph, what type of block is here and then what its purpose is for. And here's the, the options that you can have with a paragraph block. You want to make text size, um, custom size, drop caps. So each paragraph you would want to have a separate block and have the drop caps apply to that one paragraph. So, like I said, depending on what type of a block you have, you're inserting, what your choices are. So if you, a paragraph, you get the small, we already went through those. Um, if it's an image, you'll get the, if you want a fixed background, to back, how opaque do you want the background. A lot of these things are similar to short codes, and you can see that. And right now there's probably 25, 30 um, different block types, and I'll show you what those are. Um, but they are, 
I expect those to be increasing quickly. So depending on your theme or plugins you have, they can, the plugin editor or the theme creator, they can create, add new blocks, make new blocks available to you. So here's the, the common type of blocks. So image, paragraphs, headings, gallery. This classic block, that puts the tiny MCE editor. So even if you have um, Gutenberg installed and you're using Gutenberg, you can create, add a classic block and that gives you the tiny MCE editor and everything will work just like it was with, the, with a regular classic editor. So I'll show you what that looks like in a minute when we go into live code. But these are all the different kinds. And embeds, I, didn't, I couldn't fit them all on the one slide. So I, there's just a lot more of things that you can embed in here. So to insert a block, you click on the little plus sign in that upper left corner. Or first you position your cursor where you want, on your page where you want to insert that block. And you click on the little plus sign in a circle. And there's a couple places that that plus sign appears. It's, there's one above each block, below a block, and at the top left corner of the, of the page. So if, you wanna, if you're down in the middle of your content and you click on the one above that block, it'll put, insert a new block between. Um, and you can change the block type. So after you insert a block, you say, I want a paragraph. Well, I really don't want a paragraph, I want something else. You can change the block type after you've inserted it. And here's what that classic editor block type looks like. So it's just those, that block in there. So, um, here's when you're editing, you can hover over the little plus sign to get the insert block button, and that'll put a block above it. When you're editing a block, you can hover. These arrow buttons may not appear until you hover over that left side. So it helps to know that, how do I move it around? Well, if you take your pointer to the left side of that block, then you see those little up and down arrows. Or hover over the block, you'll get those. And if you have the tooltips turned on, that'll show you that move down, move up box that comes up top across it. But that'll, so if you've got two blocks, you can change the order of the blocks by clicking on those little up and down arrows. And when you click in the text, that's when you get the, the, uh, the buttons that apply. If you're inserting a paragraph text and you click on that, you'll get the paragraph type choices. When, you're, when you have a block selected, there's, you'll also have the options button on the far right. And you can hide the block settings. That'll get rid of the, the right column. Um, edit as HTML. So if you want to just get into the HTML for this one block, you can get in there. You can duplicate this block, so you want to just create more of these. Um, add to reusable blocks is really cool. And I think the next slide talks about that. So reusable blocks are blocks that you can create. So you want to create your a uh, your address block. Your, if you've got a block of text that you use, or any kind of block that you use frequently, you can create that block and save it as a reusable block. And on any other page or post on your site, you can, when you're choosing the block type, you can choose, like I named this block address slash phone. So that will be in my list of blocks. So I choose that I want to add use the address phone block or insert the address phone block, and it puts it in there. And what's cool is if I change it on one page, it changes it on all the pages that have that address phone block. So if you've got a block of text, you're, you might want to have your tagline or something that you want to use on a bunch of pages, not just one. And if you change it on one place, you want that change applied everywhere, create a reusable block. When you, when you go to insert it, from block, when you click on the little plus sign to insert a block and you choose your blocks, it gives you a choice of here's the blocks that I've recently used, here's the common blocks. 
formatting blocks, different types, and the last option is reusable, and that's where all the blocks that you've created as reusable blocks will be listed down there. Okay, Gutenberg can replace a lot of short codes. So I don't know if you've ever noticed the gallery. You can get do a lot of, of changing the way your gallery looks on a post if you insert a gallery. And you say two columns, link, file. This would be the way you would have to do it currently because there's no nice editor, GUI editor for doing that. Gutenberg gives you these choices. Now you can do it either way. You'd have to go into the code and insert the, 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 this code, but you can also now have this nice user GUI interface to be able to make, do those uh, what would be custom block, or short codes. And that's where I'm saying is your plugins, editors, your creators, and your theme creators who add short codes will be able to do, make it more user friendly for you to be able to do this without having to type the bracket, gallery, IDs equal, and so on. But if you want to use a short code, you can insert a short code block and put this code in, type the, co type the short code in there, and you can still use it. So if the theme or plugin that you're using doesn't have the user interface for adding that type of a block, you can still use a short code. So let's go and play around a little. Oh, on this slide set, I've got the resources, so the links are in here. So you can go and find all these. So that one I looked at. So this is, um, this is, a, this is that demo page. I've got a site here, so we'll go here, and I don't know why my Gutenberg link is not here. I expected it to be there, and it was there Sunday, and it's not there today, last Sunday when I created my slides, and I go in there, so I don't know why that's happening. Anyways, when I go to my dashboard, here's the block. If you have, you may have dismissed this, but this is the block that says, I want to try Gutenberg, and I, Here's to insert the, the classic editor. So I'm going to try Gutenberg, see if it does something. Maybe that. Oh, maybe that's why. Now I got the Gutenberg in demo. No, I'm on the dev dev, sorry. And I've dismissed that, so it's gone. All right, so I go, I'm going to go create a new post. Wait, let me. I want to look at that demo page, sorry, first. So I'm going to go to pages. Oh, it's in the posts. So this is the a demo of a Gutenberg editor. And I don't have my, Gutenberg is not working on this. We're going to go to this other site. That's probably why it's not working. I don't have Gutenberg enabled on that site. All right, we're going to figure this out real quick, hopefully. Installed plugins. Gutenberg is active. Details. That's not what I want. Nope, we're not going to figure that out at the moment. So fortunately, i got another site I can do this with. So we come here, and we'll play with this demo. We've got the demo open. Here's where I can save this as a draft. And these, this shows the different kinds of, of images, of blocks that I can put in. So I click on this plus sign. Here's my most used blocks, common blocks. And I can expand each one of these and look and see what's the different kinds of blocks. And I can pick these from here. So this block is the cover image block. And it adds a full width image and layers text over it. It's great for headers. Let me see. Make it a little bigger for you. Do I want to use a fixed background or not? And you can play. 
that changes the width, or do I want that image to scale based on the width window size? Do I want the opacity opacity of the image? And then under advanced, you can add additional CSS. So if you know CSS, you can apply that CSS to this block, and it only appears for this block. So that's where you could add your margins and head padding and things like that, borders. And because it's the um, a cover image, it lets me put some text on it, and I can insert that. Here's where I can change the block type, and here's where I can do the formatting of that text. And here's to edit the image. This is a paragraph block. It tells me it's a paragraph. Here's where I would insert a block above. Here's where I would move the block up or down. And hover over here, here's where I get my more options to see the different things. And when I edit that, here's, excuse me, I've got the editor buttons and here's text size and things that apply. Let's see what drop cap looks like. So that applied that drop cap to this block. Here's another paragraph block. Here's another one where the text is right indented, right aligned. Um, this would be a heading. And if I click on this, here's that picture is worth a thousand words. That tells me I could navigate to this heading right here. And this is just a, a picture. Let's see. And it's got the, oops, let me click outside the picture. It's an image block, and I can put some text or the caption down here. Change the width of the images. Paragraph. Here's a list, a list block. This is a horizontal rule or a separator block. It just puts in a horizontal line. And do I want a short, a wide line, or dots going across there? So those are my choices for a separator line block. Here's where you can have columns, or this is a uh, gallery, so I said I want to put the gallery in two columns. And I want this one to span across both columns. So here's where I can go and pick the different um, pictures that are in that gallery. Here's an embed where I embedded a video. This is a pull quote block. So you can have, have your pull quotes in here and it, different choices there. And that, how that's going to look is going to be dependent on the styling that's applied from your theme. So in my theme, I can have it so these, block, these lines appear differently or how this is actually styled will depend on your theme. Here's a button block, a button. So you might want to have this, a button like this, a call to action type button. That one might make a real good um, reusable block. So you can have that exact same button. It links to the same place, every place on your, on, you put that on the page. So it'll look the same every time you insert it. So let's go and go to pages and add a new page. And welcome to the wonderful world of blocks. Click the plus to add a new block. And I can go through and see all the, the next tips. And it walks me through and basically gives this presentation for you when you're at your desk. Any questions? Yes. Okay. The, I expect they'll all do something different. <laughs> so no, it's it's going to be up to them how they're going to interface with it. Um, 
well, let me go add a new plugin. Go get the classic editor. Oh, I was on the other site. So now I go to my classic editor. In settings. So what default post type, post format, and here's where I want to choose. So I'm going to go and say, go and buy, use this one by default, but still give me an option to use the classic editor. And the mail server password, so you get all those things. So save those. So now if I go to posts, now I've got this edit and edit classic. So this is one that I started in Gutenberg, and I'm going to try to edit in Classic Editor. Edit my visual. And it's probably going to screw up the layout a lot. All the content's still there in the right order, but you'll notice that a lot of things aren't going to be working the way they're, that they were in the, uh, like here, the gallery had two columns. Now it's only got one. So that's because I went back and forth. I go back, and we edit it with the Gutenberg. It's got the Gutenberg editor, and it's got all the stuff in it. If I go to add a new post, and it's got Gutenberg, or I can switch here to edit classic. And that gives me the, the old classic editor. Yes? For probably until I at least test it. But yeah, I would leave it in classic mode and try it. And Look, I, I'm not familiar. I don't use Beaver Builder, so but you'd have to use look and see how those, how that does Beaver Builder, Divi, they're all doing something a little different. Yes. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. I'm the one who's been telling everybody to do that in the other sessions. <laughs> all right. Um, if you're using a a page builder, do you use Classic Editor or the the Gutenberg? And it's going to be, depend on the page builder you're using. And I expect over time, they're going to switch to where you'll be able to use both. But I'll, I'll default to seeing what do they recommend and follow their instructions. So back. Yes. I expect they'll keep that going for a, for a long time. How long do you do I expect them to keep the classic editor going, I expect that to stay for a long time. Yeah, Divi, Divi has come out with a new 3.0. I think it's 3.0, but the, the newest version of Divi does work with Gutenberg. Yes, sir. Okay. So if I insert a paragraph, and type some text in here. I can't change it. Once, if I, once I type text in there, I can't. So once I, if I insert a block, then at this point I can change it. But once I type text, it says, hey, you got a paragraph here. It wouldn't make sense to make that into an image. Right. So, yeah. so now I can go to gallery and I get my upload my media gallery questions. So I can change it until I've made some changes to it. Any other questions? Yes. I have had similar issues, yes. 
Um, image, inserting images and floating, getting the floats to work correctly. So if I go to add an image, and we'll do the library. So I got that one, and I want it to align right. Let's resize this a little smaller. And take it up. Oh. Give me my plus sign. Oh, I can. I should be able to drag these around. Oh, it's. Oh, it's. I need to move this down. I should be able to drag these blocks around. So if I click on this paragraph block, come on, give me the little plus sign. I have dragged them around before. There, I get my little hand, put it on the edge, and you can drag that block around. So I want my image gallery. Oh, I, put, I inserted a gallery. I want to insert a gallery. I want to insert a image, not a gallery. So, so, okay, so that so you've got inline images. So if it's a small image and you want it to appear like in the body of your text, so inline image. Select. I'm gonna get rid of this one. So that inserted it in with my text. Come on. Come on. Remove that block. So now here's here's I've got that with my text, and that's going to appear. This is my inline image. So that's not a. This is, hmm? Yeah, well, I put a space in there. So that's inline text. And that would be where you'd want to put like a little image. If I want to, let me put a image block and then maybe a library. So now I've got this image and this is the one that I can have my text line left and that's going to have the text wrap around it so here's I've got my text if I resize this so when I put the image in then I can have do all the wrapping so I insert an image block and tell it how I want the text to wrap around it and this is an inline image so if I want text in the body of the paragraph that's where I insert the inline image Um, insert a block above. We'll put a heading. This is the title. And I didn't get the uh, the permalink here because I haven't saved it, so I got to save it as a draft. Now when I click on there, then I get the permalink, and I can edit that permalink. So I choose edit, I want, change this to be my dash title. And that's how I can edit the permalink on that page, yes. No, I don't. Are you doing a, maybe it's a difference between a page and a post? Okay, I'm in a post. So when you click on title, on the title of the post, you don't get edit, you get change permalink. I wonder if I've, if it's got something to do with pu the difference between published and not published. No? Do you have the current version, the same version of Gutenberg that I've got? That may be 
the difference is a different version. Because they just released a new version of Gutenberg, I think, last night or yesterday. So we may not be on the same exact version. Um, but it's coming soon, so somewhere in the next few months, or it could be tomorrow, we'll be seeing Gutenberg installed coming to your computer. Any other questions? Anything you'd like to see? Yes, ma'am. Editors. She asked, the only people that can, can access Gutenberg would be admins? No. Editors will be, the, anybody who can edit a poster page will be able to edit, will be able to see the Gutenberg editor. Now your admins, depending on your permissions and what levels of permissions, your admins will be able to add and install the plugins. But the editor, They, they'll be able to, she said, this will, be, will this be good for the editors to control the layout without touching the theme? Right. They, the, the editors will be able to edit the, the content portion of the page without touching anything, anything surrounding it. That's, that's determined by the theme. Is the header, the footer, the sidebars, all that's determined by the theme. This is just going to be what's inside that content area of the page. Yes, sir. Oh, so you, okay. So once you save it, yes, ma'am. On the left-hand column, you got Gutenberg and demo. Yes, you have. Oh, oh, you want the other, the one without installing it, is at WordPress.org/Gutenberg. You want to know where to get to the demo? So there's two demos: the demo on your site if you've got Gutenberg installed, or before you install Gutenberg, you can come to WordPress.org/Gutenberg. Any other questions? What do you all think? Yay? Yes. Let me, let me look at a page. Let me go. Gutenberg demo. And I'm going to leave this page. She asked, what are the arguments against using Gutenberg? And is it just comfort level? That's, that's probably a real big one. Um, do you want your editors to be able to fully con change the layout of the content? Do you want your content structured in a certain way? If so, then you might not want your, your editors to do that. Uh, um, let me go to I want to go to code editor. This is the code that it creates. So this is going to look fine in a WordPress site. WordPress knows how to interpret that comment block line that says that this is a block, that this is how this block is supposed to be displayed. If I took this page and took it out of WordPress, I've got all the content here, and I want to use it somewhere other than a WordPress site, it's going to look like this. So it's going to lose all that formatting. So are you planning on migrating out of WordPress to something else? How are you using that content? Um, how are you getting it out of there? But what control, who, who do you want to have control? Um, how do you want your page to look? Does it work with your theme? Does your theme support it? Does your theme support it correctly or the way you want it to support it? So those would be the questions that I'd want to check before I implemented this on my site.
Now, just change, adding the Gutenberg plugin to your site shouldn't break anything. It's when you create a post or a page with the Gutenberg editor. Does your, pay, does your site handle that correctly? Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Have, enjoy your day. And if you have questions, I'll be around here. Feel free to grab me and, and bend my ear. Come to the meetups. <laughs>